one person was hogtied and towed out on the back of a car, which is reminiscent of Iraq uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, the chase then went north into the city. Um, security chased the vehicles. One blew up while it was being attacked, and the other one came to a halt, and the people inside shot. My mom was on her way to work, and she was actually running a little bit late. She was running about five minutes late. And on her way to work, she heard uh, what she described as sounding like firecrackers and realized right before she turned the corner that they were actually gunshots. And luckily, she was standing in the alleyway right next to a friend of hers, Garden's door. And she banged on the door to try and get her friend's attention, who led her into the house, and they hid it out in the house while some of the terrorists that were going through town and were shooting up the buildings. They captured a, a, an Australian a guy that was working over there and drug him through the streets. In the crossfire between security forces and terrorists, dozens more were injured, their wounds treated in the town's hospital. My mom called me from Saudi Arabia, told me she couldn't stay on the phone long, that they were worried about the phones being tapped and they were worried about if there was going to be any more occurrences, but she wanted to let me know that she was safe and that she would be coming back to the States as soon as possible. This unprecedented attack was shocking not only to the community that day, but also, as we saw, to those who once lived in Yanbu. Our next guest all lived in Yanbu for most or all of their, their childhood. We welcome Bobby Duda and Julie Wee to the program. Welcome. Thank you. So Julie, your dad was living in Yanbu during the time of the attack. How did you react to the news? It was actually really shocking because I think the first uh, news I heard of it was through my little sister who had seen it on the internet, actually, and she called my mother and I, who are both in the United States. So um, just sort of watching it on TV and being so far away from, you know, my father and him being in such an area of danger was just a really traumatic experience for us. Um, all of our relatives around the world, um, a lot of my relatives are in Korea, and they, you know, they were calling us. A lot of, friend, a lot of our friends in the United States called us. So, yeah, it's, it's really hard, um, and it's something you have to deal with when you grow up overseas and you sort of have family overseas. It's just kind of a normal part of life, and especially in a tumultuous area like the Middle East. It's something that you just kind of have to deal with. Right. Bobby, you lived in Yambu for 17 years, longer than any of our guests. Um, how shocking was the news to you about the terrorist attack? Um, it caught me off guard, actually, because it, I mean, I always hear it in the news that um, over in other places like Dahran on the East Coast or even Riyadh, even um, when I was there during the Gulf War, like all the bombings, but it never really hit in Yambu because we were kind of, I guess, isolated away. Um, and when I heard about it, it was kind of like a surreal experience because, you know, I remember exactly um, uh, where uh, the bombings to p or where the terrorist activities took place. I remember riding my bikes when I was younger along the same roads and um, it was, it just shocked me completely. I mean, I've never, I don't know, it's, I've never really felt, um, I can't really say, it, I've never really uh, felt the influence of what terrorism has done until really that day. For the most part, how was your interaction with the locals? Um, my interaction was actually pretty good. I mean, I've lived there since I was pretty much a year or so. So, I mean, Yambu was, pretty much home. I mean, sometimes I still feel like it's home just because, I mean, whenever we used to go out on vacation, we'd come here or go to India or wherever, that would be where we'd come back. So, I mean, my relationship with the citizens and stuff, and I actually had a lot of Saudi kids as my friends. We used to always go play soccer. Uh, we'd play pickup games for basketball and stuff like that. So, I mean, I had a really good interaction with them. Okay. Julie, um did you grow up thinking your experience was normal? Um, I actually did. Um, I didn't know anything beyond that experience, and I grew up thinking that such diversity and such sort of a rich cultural background was normal. Um, my family and I, you know, sort of came back to the States every year, and I visited, you know, my old friends and cousins and other relatives who lived in the States and sort of compared their lives to mine, and I always considered that my life was sort of the status quo, and I always thought that I was very lucky, though. I, de I definitely did appreciate you know, the sort of experience I had that all of us were able to have. I think all of us are sort of grateful that um, we were able to experience that kind of life. And I, I really, it sounds weird, but I couldn't have imagined growing up anywhere else or been more happy growing up anywhere else other than Saudi Arabia. 
Right, because you get the best of two cultures. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Uh, Bobby, you once said Yanbu wasn't just the place, it was the people. Explain why you feel that way. Well, I mean, mm. now that we've all pretty much moved back, I mean, there's still a few families that are that I know are, that are still living there. Uh, Julie's dad, for one, for example. Um, but Yanbu itself as a town, um, I mean, there's if you've grown up here in the U.S. and you've moved back there, um, you know, there's not really much to do. We didn't really have movie theaters. Um, there's really, as far as activities goes, it was pretty minimal. Um, but what made Yambu Yambu was the people around us, our friends, our family, um, and it's just, we were a really close-knit group. Like, everyone who knew, um, was like say an expat or whose father was an engineer working there, they all went to the same school. So I mean, we would always see each other um, at the like baseball games, the soccer games and things like that. So I mean, Yambu as a city, I miss it, but without the people, it's not the same. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, now Ju Julie, you have an interesting observation on the types of people that move to Yanbu. How did these people make Yanbu such a close community? You know, I, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day from Yanbu, and we were sort of reminiscing on the past, and I was thinking that I think it's a type of self-selection. And I think people who are perhaps more tolerant, open-minded, willing to sort of be adventurous and live in this other culture, you know, bring their children overseas to the Middle East. You know, I think most people planned on staying just a couple years, but I think many people ended up staying much longer. So I think that in particular, the people that you know I lived amongst and that I grew up with, all the people here today in our families, uh, happen to be sort of a community of open-minded, you know, tolerant, liberal individuals that made living there even better. So I definitely think that the types of individuals that decided to move to Yambu affected how you know how much of a wonderful experience that we all had. Okay. Bobby, in light of everything, do you think you would ever want to go back to Yambu and live there? Um. Depends. Like I said before, it's Yambu was a great place mm -hmm. to grow up. I mean, it's pretty much all I knew from my early childhood. But um, I mean, if I was given an opportunity to go visit there, I wouldn't mind. Um, just because I grew up there, that's my childhood home. Um, but as far as working there, I'm not too sure because um, the people aren't there that I used to know. Um, most of my friends that I knew there are over here in the U.S. now, all over the place in Chicago, Texas, California. Um, so, I mean, visiting, yeah, I'd probably go back, but to work there, that's, depends on what job opportunities come by, so. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining me. It was great sharing, or sure. listening to your guys' experience. Thanks for having Thank us. you. Thank you. I hope you have discovered some new perspectives on life in this close-knit community through the eyes of our guest. I'm Annabelle Sedano. Thank you, and good night.